May 2021 numbers are in. Let's roll. roll. everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela O'Hare, your favorite Las Vegas realtor. And you know what time of the month it is when, you know who's here? Yeah, uh, Rob Howe, <laughs> Rockstar Realtor. I'm the realtor, you're the rock star. That's me. Yay. And we got Ozzy, you can't see. He always yeah. has to be in the room with us. Last time I put him on this side, this time he's in the middle and he would not budge. No, it's just crazy. The he's like, I want to be next like, to Rob. Yeah, he missed me or something. <laughs> It's like, you like me, dude, or something? Yeah. <laughs> it brings energy to the table Yes, we, we use. I wish we had the cats. Uh, that would be fun to have the cats. Oh, boy. <laughs> her be cats, a little distracted. Her, her cats, oh, my goodness. These are like little, they're like little jungle creatures that <sighs> wander around and do their own thing. So if you've seen any of my videos, or at least I had a video of Mochi, and Mochi, he likes to open all the drawers. Smart He's cat. in search for little hair ties. And then he'll open all the cabinets and he's looking for the dishwasher sponge. Pretty soon I've seen him try to open the door. So since he's opening cabinets and drawers and he's turning on the water faucet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy is like in this terrible twos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, uh, you just got it. She just got a new, uh, her kitchen all redone and a new faucet in there. <laughs> and, and the cat has, has see the gnarred on the, on the, <laughs> you can literally see the teeth marks on there. It's My brand new kitchen. I'm like, the cats wow. are all over the place. Yeah. The thing likes water. <laughs> I don't know. He loves, he's obsessed with water. He, you can find him every picture I'll take. He's in the sink, just sitting there waiting for it to come out. <laughs> Adorable. But Kai, now Kai, He's a cat. fetcher, the other cat, mm -hmm. the boy brother. He fetches, yes. He fetches. I have bottle caps from water bottles and we'll throw it and he'll bring it back, throw it, bring it back. So these cats have a lot of personality. Yeah. They're kind of alien cats. <laughs> <laughs> They're from Egypt. Right. <laughs> anyway, that's my life. I got uh, two dogs, two cats. That's taking up my life. How's it going for you? And it's going good. As you know, I have some pets too, and they're all doing well. Yes, the um, rabbits. Yeah, the rabbits are doing good. I've got a little system worked out to make sure that they stay nice and clean. And this time of year, it gets too hot for them to be outside because I like to have them when it's nice out outside for right. them to be able to have a little more space. They have a pretty big space in my house, but uh, <laughs> it can get, you know, oh, they, they actually use a litter box like cats. Oh, yeah. If you don't clean that thing, you know, you're going to have some problems indoors. <laughs> so I have a little system, excuse me, system worked out and it's great. It's, uh, it's been yeah, much easier. Yeah, he has a house full of animals. Yeah. Three the tortoise, rabbits. Tortoise, tortoise has been stomping around. A cat. Yeah. And a and nice beagle. Yeah, Mr. my beagle. Shack. 15 year old beagle. Yeah. He's doing pretty good. Slowing down, sleeping a lot. So, right. you know. Poor guy. Yeah, but he's doing good. He's happy every day. I give him little massages. How old is Vitty? Vittles is, uh, he's 14, but cats, you know, they, yeah, they can, they hopefully, he, my last cat made it to 18. So wow. I think he's probably got that kind of life left. So, so we are animal lovers. Yeah. <laughs> Water signs and animal lovers. Yep. <laughs> so, well, that brings us, let's, you know, cut to the chase. Yeah. <laughs> a little about us, you know. I'm sure you guys like to learn a little about our personal life, kind of. Yeah. Meanwhile, half the people are like, shut up and move along. <laughs> so, I don't want to know anything about you. Right? <laughs> well, the numbers are pretty interesting to say the least. And for a good, you know, I mean, what can you say in this market? <laughs> what can you say? What can you say? Right? Yeah. So last month, there were 3,189 single family homes that sold in May which is down actually 9.6% from April, but obviously we know it's gonna be up 87.3% from May 2019, yeah. I mean 2020, and you know, why? Did they sell anything in May? I mean, like yeah. 2020, I mean. <laughs> I think, you know, next month when we go over June numbers, we should start seeing the uptick and the numbers should be pretty competitive because once July hit, yeah. It was all over. We started, yeah, it started changing pretty rapidly. Might have another slow 
uh, percentage wise because this was such a massive dip and and seeing these numbers uh, really kind of it puts it into perspective because in the moment you don't realize the percentages right? right last year you don't you just know my goodness we've just we've come to a halt right and then the seeing it a year later and going okay that makes yeah, that's that's what that actually means 87 percent <laughs> less than what it is now <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> yeah i didn't have any closings in may last year yeah it went it went really dry for me too um and i used a lot of that time to do things i mean as you know you've helped me with some of the things that i've been doing and uh i think we both were opportunists well i got into i'm a crafter by trade i used to design jewelry but I got into macrame during that time. Did you? Yeah, so I made some macrame um, plant hanger and macrame this, macrame that, and mm. I, made, I designed some more jewelry pieces. So I like to be a little creative. But then after a month, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I got my creative out of the way. I'm ready to go. I, I like my <laughs> macrame with cheese. <laughs> macrame and cheese. And I, and I like to make my videos. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but that brings us to the median sales price. So it went from general 375000 in the month of April to 385000 in Bonkers. May. Absolutely bananas. It just keeps on going. 10 going, G's going, in a month. Going. Yeah. I just, just folks, this is becoming normal to some of you, but that's not a usual leap that we're making. And this trend is going to continue at least through throughout the summer. Yeah, I'm, we haven't seen any slowdown. We've no. seen quite really just still heavy, heavy stuff. I mean, uh, the, the builder process on some of these where you have to go and uh, go into this lottery style thing and there's another 150 people waiting for <laughs> four lots, you know, it's yeah. like, oh, this is crazy. So yes, this is going to continue. Uh, Yes, yeah. it put us up at 2.7% from the prior month, but for from last year, it's at 22.2% up from last year. So we've gained 22% wow. in equity in a year. So this is something I'm going to keep repeating because there's been a lot of people who refied um, in the last year. People that prior bought prior, they, ah, hey, let's get rid of that PMI. Right. Well, here's another opportunity. I mean, a lot of people who bought just last year can go in and <laughs> refi your home because and get rid of that PMI. You could do that. That's a, something you might want to look into. Yeah, because that time last year wasn't the interest rate still a little higher, or was it? It didn't. It get was to still all time low until like September or so, right? Yeah, it was still pretty competitive, so it was worth it. Um, and as a matter of fact, I I, I refinanced myself or, or last year, right right before uh, things went crazy, right? Or maybe in the middle of it. Um, I refinanced in 2019 at the end of the year for 4% and I thought that was a great deal. Mm -hmm. And then the beginning of this year I refinanced at 2.75 because I mean, come on. Yep. I yeah. got a three, so I'm happy yeah, with it. Exactly. But, but right now people could be getting a great, uh, if not similar rate, but removing $150 or more of PMI. So. Or you can sell it. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> why? I mean, you know, okay. but. If you just bought last year, and this is actually the refis but are... But people that bought last year have gained so much in equity. That's that's my point. So, but, and it is, the refis are part of the reason why we're having low inventory because people have refied and they have yeah, such a year. great deal. Yeah. They don't, they're like, well, I don't want to leave that. I'm sweet. I mean, I my know. mortgage, I have a 3,300 square foot house, five bedrooms, um, 1,700 a month. I mean... <sighs> Can't rent that. You that's can't for rent sure. That, no. And that's that's also the other marker down. It's like, okay, well, what could I rent this property for? You just can't. You can't. Mm -mm, you yeah. Can't. So, anyway. Anyway. So On that brings to us to the luxury market. Luxurious. And last month we had 145 homes that were over a million dollars sell. And the month before that was 143. So we had a two home increase. However, the median price did decrease. It went from. 1.4 or 1.54 million to 1.41 million. So it's yeah. 130,000 decrease in median price. However, the average when I looked was at 1.939. Yeah. So the average is still a little higher. Yeah. Now the luxury market is on fire. I have several clients that are in the, you know, one to even the $6 million range. There's nothing out there they can't find. And those houses, they're getting swiped up super fast. Uh, yeah, especially relative to what they normally 
move how quickly they normally sell right. in, in traditional market. And I mean, you know, homes that were in the luxury or are in the luxury market now, last year would not be in some the luxury of them, market. Many of them, yeah, <laughs> many of them. I just did a CMA, a, a, you know, a comparative, market, a comparative market analysis for somebody who has a home that, yeah, last year it was just over a million and now it's like 1.5 probably, so, you know. Yeah, and we showed, I went to, um, in the Cliffs Village yesterday, show a client a house and it was at 1.75 million. And it, you can tell it was 2018, but the person that bought it originally did just the builder grade basics. And they had it listed way above what, you know, that house, if you put it somewhere else, which should be like 700,000. It was just way too much. Yeah. It had all carpeting. It just needed a lot of updates. Well, I'm seeing that the classic, I'm definitely seeing that, which is a, a cautionary tale, the classic over listers. Oh my God. Right. I got to tell you, I got a deal. I just went under contract yesterday, VA loan. Okay. It was originally listed at 589 in Summerlin. Mm -hmm. They just dropped the price to 579. It had been on the market for like 18 days. We made an offer. There was no other offers on the table. We made an offer for 550. The seller came back at 568. We countered back at 560. So we got it at 560 with a VA loan. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, any uh, are you going? Are they going above appraisal? No, nope. no, nope, right? No, nope. they didn't. So... The, the, the agent called me like. If we go to 560, will your buyers waive the appraisal? I'm like, no. <laughs> right. We're not right. going to waive the appraisal. We know it's not going to appraise. So that's why we went the price that we did. Well, with VA, you never know. I got to tell you. Yeah, VA I know. is very, they're very, uh, I like their uh, way they do appraisals. They want to get, they want the veteran to get the home and they don't want to have to uh, make the sale uncomfortable. So if they can make it work, they will. Oftentimes, you'll see that they come in on average, at least from my experience, higher than most other mm. appraisers do. So VAs are advantageous in that way. They have some other things. I've had a lot of tidewaters with VAs. Uh, remind me, tidewater is uh, um, oh, where you have to where you have to go back and prove. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I haven't had this. Why I'm 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 like forgetting what a tidewater <laughs> is because it's literally been years since I've had one. Right. Uh, which means basically you have a you're rebutting the appraisal. You're saying, wait a minute. You have minute. to prove why it's a why you feel it should sell at that price. Yeah. So the appraisal came in low, and you've got to say, hey, wait a minute. You're rebutting the appraisal. Here's the information why it shouldn't be this low. Right. Uh, I haven't had any of those for years, and so VAs have been very favorable in my opinion. But of course, when you have those moments, you sort of it sort of readjusts your thinking about them. But well, the food for thought is that or there is hope that you can sometimes, depending on the situation, get a house priced under what it's for asking less. for. Sure, sure. However, it was priced too high to begin with, with the right. overzealous seller. Right. right, and this is the cautionary tale, is that yes, there are miracles in the market, <laughs> but within reason on those miracles, miracles and um, you know, sometimes the classic overlist, I mean, if you're lowering your price in this market, You've made a mis misstep. You've made a mistake in overpricing your property. That's my opinion. I think it's a pretty good opinion. But you know, it's <laughs> so hard. You know, yes, the sellers are getting aggressive, but at this point in the game, you know, I, I'm going to be having a listing soon, and they said 400. I would have argued it, but you know what? If you want to list it 400. Well, it's listed it at 400 and if it doesn't sell in two weeks, then we can lower it. But, yeah. you know, th these people want what they want and they're not going to listen to reason because everyone else is making money. Yeah, well, that's true. Uh, but I think it's worth taking in perspective. Um, you know, uh, you, you could, yes, you want to make money, but just because you can name a price doesn't mean you'll get it. And it also <laughs> doesn't mean that it won't hurt your sale and actually hurt your bottom line. Right. Um, you know, would you rather have a feeding frenzy that dictates what the market is willing to pay, or would you rather have something that's much slower and you're waiting on one buyer that comes along and finally says, coughs up an offer to you that's really not even what you're looking right. for, and then you're negotiating down to, uh, you know, what maybe you would have been negotiating up to anyways, and maybe even further, you know, than what you I've get. always been a firm believer of price it right at or below market value. So you create that interest, the multiple offers yeah. that will eventually get it to where you want it to begin with. In a market like this, you can count on it. You yeah. can count on that the market will tell you. But I understand there are those uh, there are those sellers 
that feel that they have something that's very special that's going to go on the market in a in a very low inventory market. If you do have one of those, there are times that the actual I have to be very honest. Sometimes I have to say, seller, you have you bought this home. You know more about it than I do, even though I do this every day. Sometimes they have a, a, a better feel on what right. they think that property is going to get. And I have, I've been, I guess I can say I've been wrong. Yeah. You know, so we're not perfect. We, we don't want to, <laughs> we never want to say you can't do that and you, you should never do that. That's not, never is not what I'm saying. Right. I'm just being a cautionary tale. Right. Think about it. Be smart and uh, take every bit of information and hopefully you've got really strong agents that uh, that can that can tell you they can give you information that really help you make that decision right um <laughs> real quick uh about the luxury market yeah. i wanted rob to mention about this condo that happened with your oh, yeah. company very cool we uh elite realty uh, one of the agents out of our office sold the highest sale ever for a uh, for highest growth what is it gross sale um just yeah the highest just sale. the highest period let's just say that <laughs> sale period in price uh of a condominium a, a high-rise condo in nevada in all of nevada ever and they originally listed it at 18 million i think 18 in october yeah it's 18 million even uh in october so it took a little bit of time yep but boy, did the market work with them, and they sold it for 16.25 million. Um, I think that is a great deal for the seller. Maybe the seller wanted a little bit more. Obviously, they did because they asked for it's more. It's a condo, guys. But it's a <laughs> it's a condo it's on the strip, right? Wait, wait, wait. Are you talking about an apartment? I know. Basically, are we <laughs> we talking about apartment? This is in New York, right? <laughs> no, I mean obviously it's a pretty big condo just yeah. because the, it has. Dual masters, seven bedrooms, a, a, a state-of-the-art fitness facility inside the and unit. all the equipment. All the equipment. So I mean, it sounds like two hundred fifty like grand the, worth. It of was it. the penthouse at the top story oh, yeah. of this. It was I forgot what building it was. Was it the uh, Martin? It Martin. Was the Martin. Martin yeah. Condo Tower. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, th what a massive sale. Uh, you know, I'm guessing somebody some. Um, oil czar for, or, or oil <laughs> person from Dubai or something. <laughs> Do you have this. your calculator? Let's figure out how much that agent got. <laughs> right. Well, you know, if they... 16.25 million times even 3%, man, that's I mean, like... even a 1%, which, uh, you know, not saying you would do that. But, yeah, uh, but that's what? Maybe for a... How a, much is maybe that? Maybe for 16 million. A million dollars? Would... It's a lot. It's very good. <laughs> it's 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 very good. And, I would have um, liked to have been in the agent on the buying end. <laughs> Yeah, actually, the, the buyer's agent probably, my guess, got more than the listing agent. Yeah. But the listing agent gets to parlay that sale. And, I mean, just to have the bragging rights to the highest condo sale ever. Yeah. Guess what he's getting more of or she's getting more of. I think it was a More heat. listings. Um, uh, yeah. They're getting more listings. More condo listings. More condo listings and probably a lot more of them. You can parlay that. Basically, I would... You know, for me, I would take that kind of a listing and work out a deal that the seller was happy with on the commissions just so I could have more of those and be able to say I made the highest sale in, exactly. all, in all of the history of ever being ever. Yeah, even like you said, 1% of 16 is still a lot of freaking money. So they're yeah. not like bandits. I mean, here's the thing. I don't want anybody thinking I'm soft on negotiating, negotiating my own commission. <laughs> Because I, I'm not soft on negotiations at all. But we're just not greedy. But but there is yeah there's this is maybe there's an agent or two out there that watch us. There is there is some intelligence to to you know not being too uh, too hardcore on on what you feel you need to get you know. Yeah, they used to call it or they call it commission breath. <laughs> yeah, cool. commission breath. Commission breath is like you know you roll up in your in your brand new Mercedes. <laughs> as the agent and you're and you're just like hey i need to pay my car payment are you going to buy this or not <laughs> <laughs> all right that's enough about the luxury market let's get into the number of listings um, so for may there were a total of 3731 new listings on the market which is actually up 0.9% from april mm. and up 15.5% from the prior year obviously we know from the prior year right. it's going to be up but it was just slightly above, which I find interesting from April, but the sales weren't as high as April, even though we had more listings. 
So is this is this the uh, proverbial sun peeking out from the clouds? Is uh, are we starting to see we're getting some more inventory? Uh, is this partially because of those people we talk about the classic overlisters that are gonna have their properties hang over into the next month and not sell? Um, probably all of the above. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, honestly... Something to keep an eye on. Well, and then this goes to the next number, which is an interesting number that ties it in, that um, there were 2,031 single-family homes listed without offers last month, which is actually up 11% from April, but down 65% from the prior right. year because we had more listings on the market. So this number had been hanging around the 1,800 range for a while, 16, 17, yeah, 1,800 low. range. Now we're creeping back up. So, but then the next number is kind of interesting. So I don't see how this all plays because then the homes are selling faster. So it must be the homes that are um, overpriced, need updating, sure. are, are keeping the, these numbers. Yeah, I think I think we're getting legitimately. We are get. It's clear we're getting a little bit more inventory, uh, and and some of that inventory is coming on at a higher price, and it's making some buyers balk. But I think there's so many buyers, including the ones that are just waiting on the sidelines until they, that property they're looking for comes up, that they're they're still filling the gap immediately. Right. Boom, boom, boom. Right. And and if it makes sense, especially in the lower price ranges, they're just they're just eating up all that inventory. But is this, now this is where we got to see what happens next month. The next month will be very interesting on this point alone because if that trend continues. Right. I don't know how June is, but I know for July, I'm like, I'm booked all month. So I know July numbers are going to be high. I don't know how June numbers, I w had a slow May for myself. Mm -hmm. So I think June may be like, you know, just a soft. I had a massive June. So, so then, yeah. I know. This so is don't like, know. you know, so far but this I honestly June, think I'm June, having a massive June, um, I should yeah. say. <laughs> I'm getting calls left and right. Well, I'm busy now, but it'll be for July numbers. Right. But I'm, I mean, the moment I woke up this morning, call, 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 call. Right. I'm like, okay, I can't keep yeah, up Yeah, I feel the same way. So, but I'm thinking for May, were you busy in May and you have closings for June? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know because I had a very, very soft very May so. just because I was like on vacation all month doing my kitchen. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> that, that was self-imposed softness that yes. you uh, experienced. That's yes. all right. We have to do that sometimes. We yeah. have to pump the brakes. But I don't see it slowing down for the summer because now people no. are on summer vacation. Kids are no. out of school. People yeah. want to find a place to live before school starts back up in Absolutely. August. You have you have some natural, traditional uh, you know, uh, <laughs> movements that will, will happen in the marketplace that are continuing to take place the the question i have is the, you know this uh, uh, ha, um goes to the question of are we seeing more sellers coming on which m the answer that i think it is is yes a little yeah i think it is yes now that's the trend we have to watch it's not whether or not there's enough buyers to take up that inventory there is and there's going to be we know that are there more actual listings coming on um I think so. I know so. At least this proves it. And now we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. And then, well, you know, there was only uh, only 0.9% increase of listings. It's small. So that's not it's, a lot. It's a peak out of the clouds. Yes. So does does that stay the same or does that increase next month? What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? Let Let's make know. some bets. Let's make some bets. I, it's Vegas, baby. Let's make some <laughs> bets. Well, that brings us to uh, uh, the months of supply. And we've been hovering around um, 0 0.5. 0 now 5. we're at 0 0.6. Very low. Yeah, very it's low. We're at low. 0.6 months of supply. Obviously, you've seen the number of units that haven't sold, so then that's going to increase your months of supply yep. to 0.6, which actually puts us at 23% up from April last year up. So obviously, we went from 0.5 to 0.6. That's a 23% increase. And then we are down 81.3% from last year because, again, we had more inventory on the market. Yep. So I think some of this overhang and the classic overlisting is happening. Yes. Because it, it's also this. People have seen this in incredible increase in the last, in a very short period of time. So what they're trying to do is price their property as if yeah free that protection right. yeah that'll continue right? <laughs> yeah, right so i'm gonna price this property a little bit higher or maybe a lot in some cases higher than i think right because i want to still be in into that next 
few months of gain. Right. I'm going to list now, but I'm still thinking it'll. if I sold right at this moment, I would be missing out on this much money. So let me price that into my my uh, listing. Eh, yeah. That We'll see if that's smart. I think in some ways it's not. Um, yeah, I've never been a firm believer of price a high and expect a lower offer. Uh, there's a lot of sellers that think that, you know, you list it for 450, but you really wanted 440. So yeah. you, you compensate for that. Right. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, I, I understand that. And there are times like if I'm, <laughs> If I'm selling something on Craigslist, that might be the way I do it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but this is a house, house. <laughs> housing market in this particular style of housing, uh, uh, you know, the, what's happening, the the conditions that are there. Yeah. I do not think that's the way to go. I think that you let the market dictate to you. Oh, by the way, there's another really smart reason for that is because it helps you if you get a uh, if you get a financed offer. It helps the appraiser see that you did not. That you didn't make this up that the buyers decided to go that high that tells them there is some intrinsic value there there's that there is uh the demand for, and the price is really higher than what you listed it for and you had multiple offers proving it right so you don't have to make that case to the appraiser as much and they can see clearly what is the value of the home. Well, the value of the home is it's still what, uh, someone's willing to pay is for. It's partially what is what is sold and what somebody already paid for something, but it's also partially what is somebody willing to pay for it. And if you can prove that in spades that I had multiple offers over list, right? Well, you've just made that part of it easier. So, yeah, and I would say about eighty-six point nine percent of the closings last month were closing thirty days or less. The month before that uh, was 81.5, and then for May 2020, it was 66.4. So they're closing. The nice ones that are updated, move-in ready, they're closing like that. They're, they're listed, and yep. with the hours, they're oh, yeah. either under Boom. contract yeah. or, or waiting to be go under contract. Mm -hmm. um, so I get a lot of clients ask me, is it the same? You know, if you're looking for a deal, now's not the time to buy. If you're looking to, I mean, on rare occasions, you may get a deal if, depending on the situation of the home, if it's been on the market for over 30 days, et cetera. However, if you're looking, if you're that type of buyer that expects a deal and say, you know what, it's listed for 550 and I want to offer 540 because I want a deal. Don't expect that happening. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it, it, it would be an illusion of yes. a deal, in my opinion, because <laughs> what it would mean is that you're offering on a property that was over listed to begin with. And you're getting the illusion of that you're getting a deal, but really they're just coming back. They're coming somewhere back down to earth and saying, okay, we'll right. sell it to you for this. I mean, there's still multiple offers here. They're still asking highest and best. They're oh, still asking yeah. appraise, or, um, waiving appraisal Ponies. contingencies. Do you have a pony? You better offer right. up your pony. Right. And I think for the month of, I honestly initially thought, which we're in it, this is a perfect segue into the whole forbearance. Ah thing foreclosures we better we got some good information but we'll yeah. try to make this quick we'll try to we've been but... hanging out for a while <laughs> <laughs> we like to talk but anyway um you know a lot of people like watching our show just because we just tell it how it is and you well know. whoever those people are you're <laughs> saints you're absolute <laughs> saints yes we don't like to sugarcoat it we just tell it how it is anyway. that's right so I had a CE class, which is a continuing education class yesterday, which was perfect because it was on foreclosures and a lot of the discussion was the whole forbearance thing mm -hmm. that was supposed to end. First, I want to go over the rental moratorium. Here in Nevada, our eviction moratorium was supposed to end at May 30th. And it has. It has. However, a lot of the judges here, because I spoke to quite a few property managers, are not even looking at the evictions Why? until June 30th mm -hmm. because the federal eviction moratorium ends. CDC, yeah, which has been contested and maybe not even legal, but hey, <laughs> nobody wants to get into that. Nobody wants to figure out whether it is or isn't. So these judges here locally are saying, 
we're not touching it until that's yeah, over. Yeah, and I thought it was weird. I went, to, I wanted to show a listing the other day, but it said no show because it had renter. And I'm like, oh, well, I thought that was lifted. But anyway. Well, it's still that you still have a tenant that if they say no, then True. You know, you've got a problem. True. <clears throat> Why list your house? But we're not going to get into that. So then <laughs> now the we learned about foreclosures. Typically in a normal foreclosure, after 30 days of default, you go into pre-foreclosure status. Okay. However, because everyone's in a forbearance, um, from what I had always understood, it was going to end June 30th. Okay. Um, however, there's a thing called the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Yep. And from what I was understanding, it was extending it till September. Remember a couple um, market updates ago, I was saying September, September, mm -hmm. um, or maybe it was December. No, never mind. I, I don't Let's remember the that. exact date. Right. But so. This, they call it CFPB, yeah. was trying to extend it to September, but now they're trying to pass a law that um, no foreclosures for those people that were on forbearance will happen until December 30th. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then they're also going to offer people to give you advice workouts. on workouts. Workouts mm -hmm. on how to get out of this forbearance. Either keep your home. do a loan modification. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they're trying to get everything put in the back end or rears. Um, so they, you know, all these lenders need to, you know, talk to you and tell you, you need to talk you, to well, the lender. Well, you need to call your lender. You already better be So if you're that. in this forbearance period, obviously you need to be calling the lenders and talking to them. And hopefully you've had an open line of communication yep. since the beginning. We've been Every saying that for a long time. Every three months, talk to your lenders because yep. otherwise, you know what? Oh yeah, you're I, just an ostrich. Yeah, I call it the ostrich. You're just burying your head right. in the ground and hope everything. When you pop it out, everything's okay. Guess what? Not gonna be okay. Get your head out of the ground. Deal with it. Okay, so I guess it says that nearly 1.7 million people will be exiting the forbearance programs in September. However, there's a nearly three million borrowers that are still behind in their mortgages. So that that's could, when yeah, yeah. they're gonna so, filter into these. Yeah, December categories. 31st, and then um, so what does this all mean? For well, real estate. Well, for this is where things continue to stay a little convoluted, a little, little, little cloudy in there because, uh, yeah, some of the things. Well, that, it's like the people that are renting mm -hmm. can finally be evicted, and those those that, sellers can sell, so that will help okay, bring so some th homes. That is going to be good, just because it's been a negative effect. It while well intentioned, this is like my line that I always while well intentioned. Right. It's had a lot of negative effects, especially on the rental market. I mean, <laughs> rentals have become extremely hard to get and very expensive, and it's that's to the detriment of people who generally would be great renters. But they're now look, you know. Anyway, I so. think a lot of people abuse that too. Took advantage of it, getting unemployment, plus or not making their rent. They are living a high horse now, going on no. family <laughs> vacations. No, I'm just kidding. From yeah. what I've heard, but sure, you know. there's going to be some of that. I'm sure there are people that have taken abused advantage it. of it. Uh, but th we want that to filter out. Basically, the idea that it's going to have an end. Everything needs to have a beginning and an end, and. Uh, in that way, the cycle can continue and those properties can become freed up and whether those landlords are sick of being landlords and they want to sell, that'll bring some new inventory or they just want to fill it with somebody who, uh, who now can get back on track. No, and I think they want to sell. Some of them, yes. Some of them. But th those numbers, first of all, those aren't all going to come in at once. People think, oh, this is going to happen and then it's just going to like Well, yeah, it takes drop. a minute to evict somebody. Everything's going to happen at different times. So different things will happen. And I believe this is almost, I call it the bulletproof vest for our market, where it's like, here's an impact uh, and that vest protects you. Now, unless that impact keeps happening in the same spot, it's not going to go through. It'll happen here again, happen here again. So we're wearing this bulletproof vest that'll allow over time the impacts of all this to get uh, ab ab absorbed mm -hmm. and into the market. It will cause changes, but slowly. And so that's why it's that's why it's cloudy because people think well it's just gonna this will happen and then that'll happen well it'll happen and then eventually this right. these things happen right so then you have that and then you have the more then you have the the eviction forbearance. forbearance so there's a number of things to understand there what do these people have right now that's very important their home they have equity in equity. that home. Oh, yes. A lot of it. So the last thing that anybody should be doing is allowing foreclosure to happen. 
right. you should be calling your agent and at least getting the home sold so you can take the money out of the home, pay back what you owe to the, the lender, and then if you have to go back into the rental market for a while or whatever your plan is, you can at least not lose that home through foreclosure and have, oh, a big fat zero or whatever. Right, because this isn't short sale city. Yeah, where I grew up in in the real estate market, it was short sale city, where where the sellers had nothing. They didn't have but any see, equity. But this, you know, I understand that this bureau is trying to protect the people, and I understand right. that because we don't want millions of Americans going and to sure. be homeless. However, there's got to be a point where we got to say enough is enough. Uh, of course. I mean, this is across the country, low inventory, homes going crazy. They've created this mess. Yeah, in some ways, it, it's the, the protections have created it. Uh, you know, I think generally when I see something where they're saying, we want this, like we want this date, that probably it ends up being somewhere in between the original date and the date they're going for. So maybe it happens to be that uh, it goes to October. Or something. Well, they had September originally. And yeah, so, but we'll see. <coughs> Excuse Bless me. You. Thank you. We'll see how that all lands. So, but now... If this does happen, and if this does come true, and it doesn't happen until December, expect the Las Vegas market for the next six months now to continue at the yep. rate that it's going, with prices increasing, oh, yeah. increasing, 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 with some little relief here and there, but not enough to... Yeah, depending on how much inventory starts to come right. on, you're going to want to... We'll, we'll be <coughs> watching it for you every month. <coughs> but yeah. also, so usually now the before closure process even though you get the yeah you're fall, talking it takes three months you're talking three, six nine months, months to after. a year for yeah. this to filter out so we're not going to see it until next spring or summertime yeah. yeah if anything and if it's a correction or i don't see it as a crash but i think it's just going to be a correction with with yeah what people have gained so if yeah. you buy now then you're going to be fine <laughs> yeah yeah uh you know i've had people buy new construction and it's just being built, and they already have a hundred thousand in equity, right? And new construction, yeah. Lot premiums over there in Acadia Ridge, Toll Brothers, Summerlin Red Point, two hundred thousand. Anyway, that's enough about that. Yeah. So my prediction is this is not going to happen until spring or summer next year. Yeah, and 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 I'm going to add on top of that that Vegas re, re, uh, stands to continue to benefit from what is probably going to be a continued movement and exodus out of other places, California, <laughs> um, versus where some other places like California, they are going to start to feel the pinch differently. Now, right now, this has been blanket over the country. I think it's going to start to change where you see state to state, the differences start to happen, just depending on like a more traditional market where, you know, hey, Montana over here might be slower than Vegas, right? Right. Uh, but Vegas stands to to continue to be strong uh, through this, which is an interesting uh, thing to put into that pie of, well, will we have that correction or will it be like Vegas can actually just kind of keep going? Yeah. Keep going. Stabilize. Now, I don't think this, I mean, we're going to see this for, yeah. the, for the rest of the year. We're going to upward movement for the rest of the year, roughly the rest of the, for sure through the summer. Um, but then uh, maybe we just kind of stay, you know, cool. It also depends on the buyers. If they're like, you know what, I don't want to compete with this market anymore. They got priced if, out. I mean, if the a, market changes, there's more inventory. They don't have to come in and pay over appraisal. No, but right now you know. it's a lot of people don't want to buy here in Vegas anymore because my clients are saying I could buy a home in California for this price. Vegas has gotten a little crazy. Um, or That's true. it's priced out a normal working class person where a normal right. three hundred thousand dollar house you can't find that anywhere. Yeah, Four hundred thousand yeah. you can't find these, it. These these are the effects and concerns that we will be paying very tight attention to as time goes on. Right. Because th yes, the reality is that your your average starter home, your you know that 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 young person that wants to come into the marketplace and buy a home, I mean, they're just, it's, those dreams are kind of shattered right now. Yeah. I mean, that's and just And even condos are hard to find. Uh, well, and I guess that is where it, you know, it, the parameters just get reset a little bit is that you, your expectations for what you're going to be able to buy for right now are just lowered. And, you know, it used to be you could walk in and buy a single family residence. Maybe now you're looking at a condo or a townhome. For the, the money that you might have spent a year ago or, or two years ago. And then you got to think in the condo townhomes, you have high HOA fees. 
So those, yeah. And then if you're doing FHA loan, you're very, or VA or you're FHA, limited. you're yep. very limited on what condos you can live in. And So it also could come down to areas of town. Yeah. Um, some areas of town are going to be a little less expensive than others. You have options to some degree, but right now, uh, right now, extremely limited. Yeah, I'd you like will to not see be able to find out. a house 200000 if you do. It's built in the 1950s and not in a great so... Half burnt down. Half burnt out. Not in a very good area. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, we're well, look enough. at us. Yeah. Speaking of half burnt down, 40 minutes. You guys got 40 <laughs> minutes from us. Well, I can probably edit down to five. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, you know, we don't get to talk often anymore because we yeah. don't have our show, so we have to get caught up in one, one yeah, sitting to talk about. <laughs> it's funny. We start going, and then we realize how much there really is to talk yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Well, because we don't talk that much. I mean, we don't talk much on video. Right. Um, and pretty soon, in August, will be our one-year anniversary. Wow. One really? year of doing market updates. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um... I will post a link down in the description below from the report provided by the Las Vegas Realtors. Let us know in the comments what you think is going to happen with the Las Vegas real estate market, where it's heading, um, if there's any concerns on your end, right? Yeah. I, I want to just say real quick, if you made it this far, you get a gold star. You get a gold star. Make sure you <laughs> let me know that you got your gold star in the comment section. <laughs> As always, if you like this channel, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button. Bing, 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 bing. Leave a comment down below. Share with a friend and smash that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching. Rock on. And do it peacefully. And we'll, and we'll see, see you on, on the next, next one. one. Bye. Peace.